Chapter 7, Atmospheric Pressure and Wind. Section 7.4, Local and Regional Wind Systems. So let's begin by uh, discussing uh, local and regional wind systems. Um, as discussed earlier uh, in um, this chapter, uh, winds blow because of differences in atmospheric pressure. Uh, pressure gradients can develop uh, from local to uh, global scale. Often this, these pressure gradients are the result of differences in the heating and cooling of the Earth's surface uh, spatially. Now the, um, these, these local and regional systems, wind systems that I want to talk about, are actually the result of, of thermal differences in temperature across uh, the Earth's surface. So they develop because of heating and cooling cycles that form on a daily or annual basis. Uh, the basic circulation system that develops is described in the following series of slides. So let's begin with um, what, would, what might occur during a daily cycle. Um, here we have uh, the sun. The sun is uh, providing solar radiation. Solar radiation is heating the Earth's surface um, if it's not being intercepted by clouds. But in this case, uh, on the left, it is being intercepted by clouds, so that area underneath the clouds stays cooler. Um, the area on the right warms up. This warming causes the um, isobars in the um, vertical uh, to expand. Um, and this causes the formation of an upper air low. The cool air uh, causes the air uh, on the left causes the air to descend. And this creates in the upper atmosphere a low pressure system. So in the upper atmosphere, we have over the warm Earth surface, a high pressure system. Over the cool uh, Earth surface, a low pressure system. And the wind in the upper atmosphere will blow from the high to the low because of pressure gradient force. Now, as I said, uh, the, the air uh, beneath the low is cool, and cool air becomes more dense, it descends, and on the Earth's surface, it forms a high pressure system. So that's on the left. On the right, remember I said the, the, the surface there is heating up faster than beneath the clouds. That's creating warm air. The warm air begins to rise. Rising warm air creates on the Earth's surface a low pressure system. On the Earth's surface, the winds blow from the high to the low. The arrows in the vertical describe uh, the movement of air uh, with altitude. So uh, for the low pressure system, it's moving up to the high. From the um, low pressure system in the upper atmosphere, it's moving down to the surface high. That complete cell that forms in this diagram is a circulation cell. And these are, are, are basic to all um, wind systems that we find on the Earth. So let's look at uh, sea land breeze. Uh, this is a type of uh, thermal circulation system that develops because of different heating and cooling characteristics of um, land and ocean or, or, or lake surfaces. Um, land tends to heat up faster than uh, water during the day, and it tends to cool faster at night. Water uh, warms slower during the day, but retains heat during the night and stays warmer relative to land. Dissimilar heating and cooling characteristics of land and water initiate the development of an atmospheric pressure gradient that causes air in these areas to flow. So during the daytime, Land heats up much faster than the water as it receives solar radiation from the sun. The warmer air over land that begins to expand and rise, forming a thermal low. 
At the same time, the air over the ocean becomes cool, high pressure develops, and this is because of water's slower rate of heating. The, the air begins to flow as soon as there is a significant difference in air temperature and pressure across the land to sea gradient. And that's illustrated in this diagram. So over the ocean, we have descending cool air. Over the land, we have uh, rising warm air. And you can see I've completed the circulation cell uh, for this sea breeze system. At night, the land surface begins losing heat energy at a much faster rate than the water, uh, water surface. After a few hours, air temperature and pressure contrast begin to develop between land and ocean surfaces. Land is cooler, ocean is warmer. The land surface being cooler than the water um, causes a thermal high pressure area to develop, descending cool air. The warmer air over the ocean causes a warm thermal low to develop. In this case, at night, we get a land breeze. The wind blows from the land to the ocean. And that's illustrated in this diagram. So on this diagram, we can see uh, over land, we have a cool, high-pressure system descending air. Over the ocean, we have relatively warm air, and it's rising, and there's the circulation cell. Similar thermal winds to uh, sea and land breeze also develop in mountain valley conditions. They're a little different, though, um, and I'll describe those now. So mountain and valley breeze. Uh, mountain and valley breeze are common in regions with great topographic relief. We have them here in the Okanagan. A valley breeze develops during the day as the sun heats the land surface and the air at the valley bottom and along the sides of the mountain. This causes the air at the valley bottom and along the sides to heat up and to move up along the uh, mountain sides. Uh, the air reaches a maximum altitude, usually at the, at the top of the mountains. This is where an inversion occurs. And then the winds will begin to move in to, uh, uh, away from the mountains into the valley, above the valley. Uh, above the valley, the winds then sink down to the bottom to complete the thermal cell. So here we have illustrated a valley breeze. So valley breezes form during the day. And what we have is extreme surface heating at the valley bottom and along the mountain sides. Air moves up, then into uh, the center of the valley uh, at high altitude, and then it descends to complete the circulation cell. During the night, uh, air along the mountain slopes and at its top uh, cools more quickly due to radiation loss than air at the bottom of the valley. And this is because there's less um, uh, air above it to cause uh, counter-radiation um, and the greenhouse effect. As the air cools, it becomes more dense and begins to flow downslope along the sides of the mountain. So some of you may, may have experienced this in the Okanagan Valley. Uh, it, at sunset, you'll notice cool air breezes flow down mountain sides. So the air flows down the mountainsides, uh, reaches the valley bottom, and it has to go somewhere. So where it goes is it moves up vertically. Now, if you have the right uh, terrain configuration, these mountain winds can accelerate in speed because of the Venturi effect. And the Venturi effect is uh, moving some flowing uh, air or gas or liquid through uh, uh, a cylinder that becomes smaller in diameter. And as the diameter decreases, the speed of the moving uh, uh, water or air has to increase in order to compensate. These Venturi effect winds are sometimes called cadiabatic winds. So here we have a, a mountain breeze. Um, so as I said, air along um, near the top of the mountain, uh, along the valleys, uh, along the, the sides of the mountain, and at the top, cool much more quickly than the air at the bottom of the valley. Uh, less air, uh, it's much easier to, to lose heat 
due to long wave radiation. Very little is sent back due to the greenhouse effect. Uh, you would imagine in the valley bottom there's, there's much more water vapor. Um, the air descends along uh, the uh, valley sides to the valley bottom, and then it has to go somewhere, it moves up and completes the circulation cell. As I said, if the configuration is right, kadiabatic winds can form, and these winds can be uh, as fast as uh, 100 kilometers per hour or greater. Let's now talk about monsoon winds. Now, monsoon winds are very similar to sea and land breeze, um, but on, uh, on an annual basis. Monsoons are regional scale wind systems that uh, develop because of the changing seasons. And they're predictable. They occur almost every year. Like land sea breezes, these wind systems are created by the temperature contrast between the land, let's say in, in Southeast Asia or, or India, and the ocean, uh, the Indian Ocean uh, that's below those areas. Monsoons occur over distances of thousands of kilometers, so they're huge. In fact, monsoons occur in South America, North America, uh, Southeast Asia, and India. During the, during the summer, a monsoon winds blow from the cooler ocean surfaces onto the warmer continents. In the summer, the continents become much warmer than the oceans because of a number of factors, and this causes low pressure systems to form over the continents. The water, which is cooler uh, over the Indian Ocean, forms a, a high pressure system, and the wind blows from high to low. Now, precipitation is normally associated with uh, summer monsoons. Even in South America and North America, we have, where you have little topographic relief, you get an increase in precipitation mainly in the form of thunderstorms. However, in Southeast Asia and in India, where you get great changes in topography, uh, the, this precipitation is enhanced considerably. And this precipitation is enhanced because of orographic uplift. In some highland areas of Asia and India, uh, more than 10 meters of rain can fall in the summer months. And we're talking about uh, three or four months. In the winter, the wind patterns reverse as the ocean surfaces are now warmer. And what we have is basically a, a, a high pressure system over the land, it's cooler, a low pressure system over the ocean, and the wind blows from land to ocean. And because land doesn't have much moisture associated with it, these winds tend to be dry. So why do, do uh, the land surfaces cool quickly? It's basically because um, of long wave radiation being emitted to space. Uh, ocean surface ret retains its heat energy longer because of a high specific heat of water and because of subsurface mixing. And also uh, partially because there's a lot more moisture in the atmosphere above um, uh, the Indian Ocean uh, or any ocean surface uh, that's involved in the monsoon and this reduces heat loss due to the greenhouse effect. So the weather associated with winter monsoons are a clear dry weather over the land and winds blowing from land to sea. Now in uh, India and Southeast uh, Asia, uh, the monsoons are also enhanced by the presence of the intertropical convergence zone. And um, the air that blows from the um, Indian Ocean to the continental masses of India and Southeast Asia uh, are, are uh, very warm with high humidity, so very moist, unstable air, uh, producing uh, large amounts of rain and thunderstorms. In the winter, um, the air uh, flows um, off of uh, the Himalayas, and of course this being at higher altitude, the air is even cooler and drier which uh, enhances uh, the dryness of the air that flows from land to ocean uh, in the winter monsoon period. Here's a graph of precipitation for uh, a location in India that's influenced by winter and summer monsoons. Uh, Nagpur, India, 
So we can see uh, the summer uh, monsoon uh, seems to start in June and ends in uh, October. The winter monsoon runs from uh, November to May. And you can see uh, during these months, uh, precipitation is uh, less than 20 uh, millimeters. Uh, total precipitation falling during the, um, win or the summer monsoon is about uh, one meter, um, one meter of, of rain. Um, we get about um, 30 centimeters of rain in Kelowna, so uh, over a, a whole one year period. So what occurs in, in these five months is uh, three times as much as what we get in, in uh, Kelowna.